So a month ago, I reviewed these. The PSB Alpha P5 bookshelf loudspeakers. And quite frankly, I really enjoyed them. So today, I'm gonna to be taking a closer look at their bigger brothers, the T20s. So yeah, let's roll the intro. Alright guys, so as usual, before I talk about how these speakers sound, I want to briefly summarize what it is that you get with the T20s. Now, because I already reviewed their baby brothers, I'm not going to go over things like the history of PSB and what they were going for with the Alpha series or details about the drivers just because I already covered that in the P5 review. So if you're interested in that information, just click on the description box down below and I have a link to that review. Also, if you're interested in specifications, I have a link to the product page so you can check all of that out. Let's keep things short and sweet though by starting with, of course, these speakers. So what you're looking at is a set of compact fuller standing speakers that retail for 599 US dollars a pair. They were designed in Canada, but made in China. Now, focusing on the driver configuration up top, you're going to notice a 3 4 inch aluminum dome tweeter, and beneath that is going to be two 5 and a quarter inch woofers. Now, these woofers are made mostly out of a polypropylene material, and even though this looks like a three-way design, it's actually a two-way design that's stitched together with a third-order crossover. Now, turning the speaker around, you're going to notice this beautiful walnut vinyl wrap. I have no problems with it being a vinyl wrap because, quite frankly, it looks real good. Now, these speakers only weigh around 26 pounds, which is why I can do this. Lift them up so you can see the back. You're going to see the rear port, we're going to see our binding post, and of course these little feet that come attached to the speakers. So yeah guys, that's about it, and now let's talk about how they sound. Alright, so when it comes to raw performance, let me break it down for you guys like this. First, if you're familiar with the sound of these, the little P5s, then what you can expect out of the T20s is a presentation that's practically identical, you just get more of it. You get more bass, you get more scale, otherwise though, it's pretty much the same sound. But if you're not familiar with the little P5s, then this is what you can expect. First and foremost, the T20s are all about giving you a laid back, smooth, and warm sounding presentation. These speakers are not lively. They're not going to project sound in a forward way. They're not going to make it sound like you're at a rock concert. Instead, the overall presentation is limited to the physical plane of the speakers. This is for somebody who's wanting more of a relaxing listening experience. Somebody who wants to just come home, you want to listen to your music, no matter what that music is, and know that you're just going to get a nice, pleasant listening experience. So now, let's go into detail starting with the character. So the character does reside on the warm side of neutral, and while this speaker is all about giving you good balance between the treble, the mid-range, and the bass, you are going to notice some coloration, particularly in the bass, which I'll get to in a moment. Now, to focus on the details here, first, let's start off with the treble. So the treble is going to be very smooth. It's not going to put a band-aid over the worst recordings, but you can listen to some pretty horrible recordings and still get a very decent listening experience out of these speakers. Yet, there's still good air there, there's still good detail, so if you have good recordings, specifically jazz recordings, you're going to feel like you're getting at least a small taste of what high end is all about. Now, one of the things I really like about the top end is the fact that once the music gets complex, it actually does a good job of keeping all the little details separate from one another. It doesn't sound like it's being mushed together, which is really nice. Then moving on to the mid-range. So the mid-range is going to be, in my opinion, the star of the show. Much like the P5, it's very natural sounding. When you listen to vocals, vocals sound neither too thin or too bloated, which is actually really kind of cool for something at this price point. Just really good mid-range with really good instrument timber. Now moving on, we have the bass. So the bass is going to be interesting because it really depends on how you have these speakers set up. If you put them near a wall boundary, the bass is not only going to be strong, but it may be even outright boomy sounding and dominate the presentation. These are speakers that need at least, I would say, three feet from any wall boundary in order to sound balanced like the rest of the presentation. Now when you get it right, the bass is going to be strong, it's going to have good tone to it. I think a lot of people are going to be impressed by how much bass can come out of these speakers, but in order to get the quickest bass you can get out of them, you need to give them space. 
Now, when it comes to dynamics, I would say dynamically it's just okay. If you're somebody who likes big dynamics out of a floor standing loudspeaker, even if it's compact, then there's gonna be other options for you out on the market that'll get the job done. Instead, this speaker is gonna be more about balance and good tone. Imaging is gonna be good for what it is. This is where I feel like the little monitors have a slight advantage, but otherwise they're gonna image as you would expect from anything that has a very slim baffle. Otherwise, guys, that's about it. This is a very straightforward speaker. It's fun and engaging to listen to, and it gives good performance for the money. Still, though, nothing's perfect, and let's talk about those imperfections now. Man, I forgot to mention one of the best parts of this loudspeaker. Good off-axis imaging. So if you're somebody who's looking for a solution where it sounds good as you move about the space and or you want friends and family to have a really good listening experience and not just a person in the sweet spot, these actually do a very good job at that. And now, let's talk about the caveats. Okay, so when it comes to compromises, there's a few things worth going over, starting with the fact that we're dealing with a set of compact floor standing loudspeakers. And while they can get loud for what they are, they're not gonna be for somebody who's looking to recreate the sensation of a live musical event right there in their living room. And this holds especially true if you have a large room to fill. Moving on, while these speakers produce quite a bit of bass for their size, that can easily become too much of a good thing if you don't have the ability to pull them out from a wall boundary. And at that point, it just becomes a matter of personal taste, but it's something that you should know before you buy them. And then lastly, they come with these metal grills. Some people like them, some people hate them, it's worth mentioning. I'm indifferent. Now, when it comes to the listening experience, I prefer the sound of these speakers without their grills in place. I just think they sound a little bit more natural that way, but that's something that's easy and cheap to try out for yourself when you get them home. Otherwise, guys, that's it. And that leads me to my final thoughts. That was loud. So to wrap up this review, the T20s have a very distinct way of doing things, meaning that there's going to be people out there who love them and others, well, not so much. Personally, I really like the fact that there's now a competitive entry into the market that's now saturated by speakers that are voiced to sound bright or impressive in some way. It's nice to have a solution out there that goes in the opposite direction, something that's laid back and relaxing, something that's more about good balance between the treble, mid-range, and bass, and good tone. If that's something that you're interested in, then these speakers may be worth checking out. Anyways, guys, that's going to be my take on these speakers. Stick around if you want a comparison between these and the Klipsch RP600Ms. Also, I'm going to talk about whether or not these are worth it over to PSB Alpha P5 monitors. So if you're interested in all that, hang around. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace. Okay guys, so first up, I'm gonna lay down my thoughts on how the T20s compare to the P5s. And when you get right down to it, it's a pretty straightforward comparison. The monitors are gonna be more flexible, they're gonna offer bigger imaging with tighter bass, whereas the T20s are gonna offer you that bigger sense of scale and a lot more bass at the expense of flexibility. So it's just a matter of what you want. Now, I think the P5s are gonna be the easier recommendation for a wider variety of people, just because getting them at the height that you want is gonna be easier. The Tighter bass is going to be something that I think a lot of people prefer. And plus, let's face it, in a real world environment, usually you can't put your speaker out many feet into the room in order to get the best performance. So the P5s get my nod for the easiest recommendation, but if you can accommodate the T20s, and especially if you like that fuller range presentation and you have enough room to be able to get them to sound basically at their best, then yeah, that's going to be a good way to go. So anyways, that's going to be my take on how the two compare. And now let's talk about the T20s. 20s versus the Klipsch. All right, so now let's talk about how the Klipsch RP600Ms compare to the PSB Alpha T20s. When it comes to pricing, they're both very similar in this regard. The Klipsch retail for $650, whereas the PSBs retail for $600. But once you add the cost of good stands, that's going to take the Klipsch up to, let's just say, $750 at a minimum, giving them a pretty distinct advantage. So the big question is, well, how do they compare? And the answer is, it's very straightforward. The PSBs are going to be smoother along the top end. They're more forgiving of poor record 
recordings. The mid-range, while it's not going to sound as large, is going to sound more natural. They're going to sound more tonally accurate. And the bass on the PSBs is going to be undoubtedly stronger than what you're going to get out of the clips. Now, when it comes to the clips, what you're going to get is a brighter presentation. It's going to be more lively. And even though the mid-range isn't going to have that same tonal neutrality and accuracy, it's going to sound much larger. And the overall scale of the clips' sound is going to be much more authentic than the PSB. Now the bass, even though you're not going to get as much bass out of the clips as you will the PSBs, the bass is going to be just a little bit tighter sounding, at least when you put it near a wall boundary, giving you just a little bit more flexibility with the clips. Also, there's going to be a pretty big difference in terms of efficiency. The clips can be easily driven off of moderately powered amplifiers. And while the PSBs aren't exactly difficult to drive, it's important to note that you're going to want a good 50 or 60 watts to really push the PSBs, whereas with the clips, you can get away with as little as 15. So anyways, it just depends on what you want. Both of them are good products for the money. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and found something useful. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace.